Hi, girls. Okay, who's on? Um, I know some people are trying to get on right now, and so I am just replying, and I'm waiting a few, uh, just a little bit. Um, I know I'm coming on uh, just a little early just to let people on so that people know what's going on. So let's see. Go ahead, and um, you're going to say join the broadcast. And then when you hit that, okay, I want to say to Christina, who's sitting at the cardiologist right now, Christina, you are in our prayers, and God bless you for get, trying to get on to your training. Girl, You, um, I love the saying that says, the size of a woman is often determined by the size of the problem it takes to stop her. And so think about that, ladies, as we get started. What problem, what problem do you feel like is stopping you right now? And how big does that problem feel to you? What is the size of the problem that is stopping you right now? Now, here's what I want you to do. Take a step back to take a look at that problem and think, how big is my God? Oh, my goodness. If you have a puny God, while well, your problem is going to seem huge. But when we have a big God, our problem gets shrunk to size. There is no problem too big for you, girlfriend. And so I am just so excited today. I'm looking here to see who else is getting on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is session three, Pace Setters, session three. And we are talking about sales maximizing our sales and also our customer our customer service or our customer base really building a solid customer base and so where does it start what is it all about and so i love today's training because i want to start with an actual um true story okay so true story <sighs> leading up to when i started my mary Kay business i was in my field for 10 years i was very um I would describe myself in like in public. So the people, the person that people saw, <laughs> the people, the way that I presented myself in the work, for example, I was a different person at work um, than at home. I really was because at my profession, I was very professional. I was very serious. I was very, um, you know, I got the job done. I was very focused. Um, I played around and stuff with my coworkers, you know, during lunch, but you know, I was a supervisor. And so anyway, the dynamic that comes with that, um, I had to, I had to lay people off. Oh my goodness. I had to fire people. Oh, I didn't, that was not fun. So, so what I, I share that because when, um, it came like for me, the way that I came into Mary Kay was there was a stirring in my heart for something more. I've always been the kind of person who was hungry for something. And I am um, someone who, who loves to feel like they're moving forward, um, growing or learning or moving forward. And I really had reached the peak of my career at the time. And um, I wasn't going to advance anymore until the president retired. And that would be for another 10 years, 10 or 15 years. And honestly, I really just couldn't fathom the thought of being stuck for 10 or 15 years. And really, um, I'm advancement motivated. And so I was not excited about that. And so I started to look for different opportunities. I started to pray and I started to say, okay, there has to be more. There has to be more to life. And at that same time, you know, my son was nine months old. My daughter was two years old and I had a 16 year old teenager living at home is married. I was busy. I was involved. Um, by the way, busy people were always going to be busy because we love to be busy. And so I was busy. And so then at that time, my my values were starting to really tug at me and my value of I wanted that flexibility. I really highly value freedom and choice. Flexibility. I wanted to be there with my nine month old son. 
I wanted to be there with my two-year-old daughter. I wanted to be available for my teenager who was, oh my goodness, she was a hot mess. You talk about teenagers, um, teenage drama. I really did have some. She had some teenage drama. <laughs> and so I was being tugged, you know, this personal life over here and this career life over here. And I just couldn't seem to find a balance. And so I was looking for what could I do? What could I do? And I, I took an online assessment, like a skills, strength assessment, um, because I was considering what different options, what other field, what other career, what other options are there out there for me? What might I be good at? And um, so I tell you this story because this is a true story and it has to do with sales. So now, this is where I was in my life, and my sister asked me to um, call in and talk to this uh, sales director, super successful Cadillac driver, I mean, earning six figures. I got on the phone with her, and everything sounded great. The company sounded solid. Um, Mary Kay Ash's philosophy, um, how she built her business, everything sounded wonderful. I had one main concern, and that was, I honestly didn't think I could be wonderful in sales. I didn't think I could sell anything. I had never sold anything. And in fact, I told her, I just took an assessment that told me I'm good at all these things, but I would be horrible in sales. Do anything but sales, that assessment told me. Isn't that funny? Well, I want to share with you what I truly believe is that sales, selling, it is a skill. And so if it's a skill, that means we can learn it. And guess what? I have sold a lot of Mary Kay. So much so that I made a believer out of my accountant because he was he's a friend of mine and um, he'd been doing my taxes. And so when I started my Mary Kay business, he was my biggest one of my biggest skeptics he goes why are you doing this direct sales don't you know it's just a scam they're just going to take all your money and he was like i mean he was serious and i know he he was trying to help me he was trying to protect me because he was also a friend well anyway after that first full year in mary Kay, he goes wow you actually sold a ton of product he's like i didn't know people actually you know can succeed at this <laughs> And so fast forward five years, he's like, okay, you've made a believer out of me. Um, he was so surprised that Mary Kay, you know, pays for all the, you know, the, the car with the free car program. And he was like, okay, so we don't write off the car. Oh, they pay for the tags and the license. Yeah. So anyhow, needless to say, if I could learn how to sell and how to build a solid customer base, I know I know without a shadow of doubt that you can too. Okay. And so I'm going to start the session today with talk, talking about this idea of sales. So there's a, a saying that I love and it says, make a customer, not a sale. Make a customer, not a sale. And Mary Kay Ash herself always said, we don't sell, we teach. You know, the beauty of how Mary Kay Ash developed her company was she wanted women who could teach skincare and color, how to teach women to look and feel their best. Because, you know, when I voiced my concern to that lady on the line when she was sharing the business with me and I said, you know, I just don't think I could sell anything. I don't know a thing about selling and I don't like the idea of selling. And she said, what do you think about the idea of helping women look and feel their best? Wow. I thought, I want to learn to look and feel my best. And if I could learn to look and feel my best and teach other women how to do that, that's awesome. I could teach. I could train. I've done workshops. That's what I did for a living. I've done training. I could do that. Okay. So selling is in Mary Kay. She set it up in a party atmosphere, sitting around a kitchen sink. Again, this is how you keep your skin looking radiant and young and healthy and clean. Do you want to learn how to clean your pores? This is how you do it. And so we teach, okay? We teach. 
So selling, get prepared to sell mentally we pre get prepared. So we don't ever go into an appointment with dollar signs in our eyes, right? So we get the dollar signs out of the way so we could see the person. We could see the people and we could see their needs. So the biggest skill that we need as a salesperson is our ears. So God gave us two ears, one mouth, so we can use it proportionately. So we learn to listen. When you're on the phone and pre-profiling someone, what is she talking about? Is she talking about makeup? Is she talking about, well, if I could just, you know, I have these crow's feet or I'm having a birthday, I'm feeling kind of old. What is it about? And that's why we learn to ask questions. We learn to ask questions to find out what's important to her and what is she looking for so that we then can say, okay, how can I help her look and feel her best so it's about finding the need and then filling it that's what sales is and i can still remember um starting a party a, a mary Kay party one time early in my first year when i was just getting started and there was a, a guest in in the in the room and when i was coming around doing the table open and introducing mary Kay and what we were going to do going through the agenda and then she said well you know do you know what sales is? She asked me. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, well, sales is loving people. And I was like, huh? So she'd been in sales for many, 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 many years. And she loved people. And she said, sales is loving people. Because it's about really taking the time to listen to their needs. And then helping them to, to find the, the results, the, the solution for their needs. And so you're loving people in that way. Okay, so, so when, when we think about women, we love to buy. We love to purchase. Did you guys know that women, we control 80% of the purchasing power in the United States? Wow. Because we make a lot of the purchasing decisions in our home. I'm the one who does all of the grocery shopping. I just bought a set of pots and pans. I buy the Cutco knives. I buy, so I'm making those big purchasing decisions, the refrigerator and the washer and the, you know, and the cars and um, what do we need, you know. And so women, we do control a lot of the purchasing power in the United States, which means we buy a lot. We're always buying. Okay, so women, we love to buy. We don't like to be sold to. We don't like to feel like someone's taking advantage of us. We don't like to feel like someone's shoving something down our throat. Am I right? And so the skill of selling in what we do as a Mary Kay beauty consultant is that we are inviting them to learn how to take great care of them without convincing them of anything. So the way we don't convince someone is that we find out first what they're wanting. So then it's not us telling them what they want. It's them telling us what they want, you see? So it's just a shift in thinking. Okay, so um, right now, because Mother's Day is around the corner, I thought, oh my gosh, let's talk about meeting people's needs based on things that are happening in the calendar. And I want to say every single month there are selling opportunities because there's always something. If it's not Mother's Day, then it's Father's Day, then it's graduations. Graduation season is just around the corner and I want to share with you that I definitely maximize the selling season of graduation of birthdays on Facebook. And so I'm going to talk about how to do this. So when you are reaching, um, you need to put an action plan together, first of all. You don't want Mother's Day to pass you by and be like, I should have, would have, could have. Okay, so you want to think, okay, Mother's Day is coming up. How am I going to maximize helping people during this time? And so I love one of our consultants, Kira said, okay, I'm going to go talk to guys because guys don't have a clue. And it's true. They don't. A lot of them haven't even thought about Mother's Day or their mom yet. Okay. They're going to go out and buy her like last minute thing. Right. And so this is where we come in. We can help them save the day. So we put an action plan together. And so I really love the, the mother daughter facials as well. So um, one idea that I've done before is having mother daughter um, facials and also gift certificates for Mother's Day at preschools. So if you have a child in preschool, 
or a grandchild in preschool. So then you can say, oh, I offer free gifts for Mother's Day to honor all the moms. Um, is it, would it be okay with you to go ahead and give you these gift certificates? And so I just make um, simple gift certificates. And I want to show you a sample of one. I mean, they could be super simple. By the way, we have an awesome um, discount at Office um, Depot. So if I were you, I would just find out how many moms do they have. Um, and um, also you can get them printed really cheap. I mean, you're going to talk $15, less than $15 your cost. And so a sample gift certificate would be something like this. And so then you offer it to all the mommies. And so you give them a stack. You give a stack to, um, and they can put them uh, at the front office as they come in on the counter. I've done that before. And so all the mommies get a gift certificate, okay? And it says you're entitled to a free, um, you know, mommy pampering session and a $10 gift certificate towards any $20 purchase, okay? And a free, you know, and one grand prize winner will win a Mother's Day basket. I love that. Okay, and so that's a wonderful idea. Another idea for Mother's Day is when you do go to places that cater to men. So um, you can do a table event at Jiffy Lube or any of the uh, a mechanic shop or wherever men are going to be going through. And you put up a little table. You have your baskets out there. And then you are reminding men, hey, have you thought about Mother's Day? It's like, oh, darn. Um, you know, do you have, do you get a Mother's Day gift for your mom, for your wife, you know, for, so then you're going to find that out and you're going to say, how many baskets can I help you with? You know, let me help you. And so if you already have a customer base, the way that you would do this too, is you would call up. So you can call up the men in your life. Okay. So you would call the men in your life and say, hey, have you already thought about Mother's Day? Let me help you. And so the nice thing about men is you can be real just direct and upfront with them. Like, hey, how much are you going to spend on that gift, on your gift for your mother, you know, for your mom? Let me help you. And so then they're like, oh, yeah, good, great. I don't have to worry about it. And so you can call the men. And then you can also call your great customers, um, female customers, and you can say, hey, I'm offering specials for Mother's Day. You know, I offer, I offer free gift wrapping and delivery. You know, who can, um, can I help you with your Mother's Day gift? And so she's going to um, tell you. So if you have a customer base, definitely you want to reach out to them. A lot of times these women are super busy. Um, some of my customers are so busy that it's nice to be able to offer them that service so they don't have to think about it. And then obviously you're putting together a professionally, um, you know, looking, professional looking um, gift for Mother's Day. Okay, other focus areas that I want to touch on is um, are for weddings. I work a lot with brides and so offering to do a pampering session for the bride to get her face glowing and in tip-top shape for her wedding, for her big day. And you make sure that you let her know that skin experts recommend six to 12 months out before her wedding in order for her skin, to, her skincare regimen to really take effect and her skin to adjust and those results to be coming through so that she gets her face glowing for her big day. And so it's a lot of fun to offer uh, wedding packages. And so I always offer the bride um, hostess incentives. I will give her, um, you know, the, the packages that, that are specific to her. So like bridal essentials. And on In Touch, there's an entire section on In Touch that is dedicated specifically to the bridal industry. This is a multi-billion dollar industry a year. And the research has shown that women around their wedding day or for planning their wedding are willing to try new products, to explore different makeup options and different products for their skin to prepare for their big day. And so, you know, how can we get in front of those brides? And so who do you know who's getting married? Who do you know um, who, you know, who's having um being in a wedding and how can you uh, provide support to that bride. So the wedding industry is huge. Another focus area is graduation. And so this is how I worked it and I have gotten great results. So, you know, on Facebook, pretty soon here, you're going to have a bunch of posts related to graduations. Um, there's going to be people saying, I'm so proud of my eighth grader, or I'm so proud of my senior who's graduating. I'm so proud of, you know, my college student, or I'm so proud of myself. I'm graduating from college. 
all these graduations. So as people post, you know, things on Facebook, I sent a private message. Okay, so let me give you one concrete example. So there was a gal on my that I have on Facebook, and she's just an you know acquaintance. We went to high school together. I mean, so I haven't seen her in 20 years, right? And so she, uh, I saw her post that she was so proud of her. Um, she had two daughters, one graduating from eighth grade and one graduating her, uh, as a senior the same year. And so I sent her a private message, and I just said, oh, my gosh, Susanna, congratulations um, to your two girls. Oh, my goodness, they are so grown up. I mean, they're, they're really gorgeous, her, her daughters. And so I just congratulated her and I said, I'd love to offer your daughters a little gift um, for graduation. And also, um, I'd love to get together with you girls and pamper you um, in honor of their graduation. Oh my goodness, she was like, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. She's like, absolutely, they're gonna be so excited. And so um, we set up a day to come and she invited also some other people, some, some of her friends, and then her, um, so her daughters and her and her other friends. So I had a couple of adults there and then of course her, her two daughters. And I came out and um, I had a little gift. Just, I took some of the at play so the at play stuff is fabulous because of course young people love it. So lip gloss, lip crayons, or the eye crayons, and so I just wrapped them real cute with the little bow. And then I told, um, I went there and then I, I gave them the full facial. So the girls, I used botanical effects with them, and then with um, Susanna and the other adult, I used the time wise. And so I did the whole pampering session and I honored the graduates. And you know what? I ended up selling an entire roll of bags, satin hands, the botanical effects, and a foundation for the daughters as well and so one of them um, the, the high school one that was graduating from high school actually worked she had a job and so she wanted to spend her, her money as well I offered them a $10 gift certificate and so she wanted to um, also put in her own money because she fell in love with the products and so she did purchase with her own money as well and so um, and so they're my customers and so that was a lot of fun so I started doing that I was like oh this is fun so I started then um, Anybody that I saw, I would send them a private message, and I booked several. So during the summer months, I was booking from the graduations that were that were happening. I was booking mother daughter, um, mother daughter uh, appointments. Okay, uh, and I'm sure you can transfer that. So if it's a guy, you can also offer it to the guy. I have. Um, people who purchase for their teenage son also, especially I have one family who purchases for their three sons. Um, and then, well, actually one of the sons purchases for himself because he's in his twenties, but then she purchases the, the um, clear proof um, and the botanical effects for her two younger sons, teenage age. Okay, now what about um, every every month there's something. So there's either Nurses Day, there's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, there's a bunch of just focus areas, Administrative Assistance Day. And so anytime that there's something like that happening and you see someone post something on Facebook, you can always private message, offer them a little gift. Um, for birthdays, this is a huge one. So you could send them a little birthday a cupcake I send them a little picture of a cupcake um, and and I private message them and I say ah I you know happy birthday in honor of your birthday I'd love to pamper you and your friends and offer you a free gift and a gift certificate oh my goodness and then um, and so I've done those too it's so it's so much fun to pamper them and they feel so special and that's what we're in business for you guys to make other people's day and to make them feel special because when they do, they in turn will, I mean, they just love it. I mean, they love it, they love to feel special and they love to shop with you when they trust you. You know, it's it's been said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so we show the caring first. Right before they've made any purchase, we show the caring first. So those are some focus areas. Now you, we we have to remember that we are in business, so we have to be business savvy. So we have to be prepared. You know, Karen Gardner always said the four P's are preparedness, prevents pitiful performance, and so we have to be prepared. 
how do we get prepared? Well, we have to have our sales tickets. We need to make sure we have our customer profiles, that we have our promotional items ready to go, that we have our sets, that we know what the pricing is, that we are ready um, for business. Okay, we have the appropriate product on hand. So if Mother's Day is, you know, on the weekend that you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, let me sell this and I don't even have it. <laughs> On hand, so you have to make sure that you are prepared, that you have the product. If they're buying a gift, that it's already ready to go, right? That you have to make sure that you have samplers, um, that you have the product for them to sample. So if somebody wants you to match their foundation, do you have that foundation to match her with? And so um, we're putting our customers first when we're prepared for them, and we are um, stocking our shelves for them. Okay, because it's all about them. It's all about the customer. Okay, and so following through. So the thing about it, too, is that most of our plans and most of our dreams and our goals, they don't materialize not because we don't have a desire for them, but it's lack of follow through. Most of the times it's a lack of follow through. So we have to learn to finish what we start, okay, and we write down what we learned from that experience. So what went well? What did it go well and what can we learn from that? Okay, how can we enhance that next time we try it? So what I would say is you've got to try something a few times before you toss it out. So like let's just say you try the graduation idea and with one person and it was like doesn't work or you try it with two. You can't just try it once and then throw the idea out the window. You know, kind of tweak it. See what works for you. Make it better. Do it again. And so we can't, um, that's how we learn, right? We learn sometimes by our mistakes. And so how do we do customer service? So the thing is, make your product easier to buy than your competition. We do have competition, right, in the beauty industry. Woo, there's a lot of competition. Okay, so we have to make our product easier to buy than our competitors. Is it easy for your customers to purchase from you? Or do they have to jump through a bunch of hoops? <laughs> I think about this story of this customer once that called me. I didn't know her. She found me on my website and she said, um, you know, I'd really love to replace my miracle set. I go, okay, yeah, I have that in stock. What formula? And then I said, okay, and how do you want to pay for that? Um, you know, I can get that out to you. And she said, what? You're going to get it to me? And what? I could pay with my credit card? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. She lived out in Wasco and would drive all the way to Bakersfield she said, oh, my consultant makes me drive to Bakersfield to pick it up. And she said, and I always have to have the exact change. You know, she, she doesn't give me change, and she doesn't allow credit card or, or any form of payment other than cash. And I just thought, oh, okay. Um, and she said, but, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I found you. And so, you know, is it easy for people to buy from you? Or is it a hassle? Because it's just as easy for them. Why They might as well just stick some stuff while they're at Walmart in their basket, you know, because that's easy. Um, is it easy or do they have to, you know, so it comes down to how easy is it for them to purchase from you. That's how you build a solid customer base is when you make it easy for people to buy from you. Customer service is the provision of service to customers before during, so during that appointment and after the purchase. So every step of the way, we're providing a great service to them. So we expect to create a relationship with people. So, you know, at the beginning of a, an appointment, I always like to tell people, you know what, I'm not interested in a one-time sale. I, I love to build customers for life, and so I will take great care of you. I offer, I always offer a gift with purchase with any purchase of $40 before taxes. Um, I deliver to your home or your office. I stock a full inventory for my customers and you can always pay with cash, check or charge and I can even do a payment system with you if you really love something and you need a little bit of time to pay that off. So I let them know how my service is different and how I'm gonna take really great care of them and how four times a year I will, as the seasons change, I will teach you all about the new stuff coming out so you can keep looking and feeling your absolute best. Okay, I don't focus on the one-time sale, so I always let them know that. I always provide room for a follow-up. So in the beginning, I sometimes 
hesitated to follow up with people who purchased because I felt like I was going to try to get them to buy more stuff or I just was hesitant. I didn't know how to do it without feeling awkward. And so what I found was that at the front end, when they're making a purchase, I always let them know, hey, listen, you're going to get on a new system and every anybody who purchases from me after, you know, for the very first time, I always follow up with them just to make sure that they're loving their products, um, that they know how to use them, and if we need to make any adjustments. So I will be sending you a follow-up text or I'll be calling you okay in two days and then in two weeks and so I let them know in the front end during the individual consultation like I'm gonna be following up with you you're not gonna be left out dry hanging you know if you hate something or whatever I'm gonna follow up with her and I do so I'm a woman of my word I do follow up with them and normally I will just get a, a text back that says everything's great I love it or else they'll say something like oh wait yes I'm glad you texted me because you know I've been using this and um, I feel some dryness around my nose is that normal and so then we'll address that and oh yeah just do this or do that and so um, we can make any adjustments and they are so grateful they're so grateful they're like thank you so much this is you know this is great now I know how to use it and so if they're using it properly they're gonna love it and if they love it well then they are going to be a loyal customer with you and so I always do that on the front end I let them know that I'm gonna follow up with them I also like to use tools that help um, you know existing customers and so there are e-cards that you can send. You can also do uh, birthday uh, reminders. So I posted something on Voxer where I do a 20% during the birthday month off of any purchase. Um, also, I do do, I have a, my, my web page set up so people can place their orders on um, the website. If someone's placing their order, I always let them know, like, if you have a special discount, like for birthday month, I say, if you're going to order online, just, just put it. Um, the option where I have to review it so that I can charge them the correct amount because otherwise they're going to they're going to pay full price. Um, and then, of course, on the website you can always include for free. Mary Kay allows you to select two free samples, um, so I love that. And so when they order online or when I'm shipping something using customer delivery service, I will go ahead and include two free samples with that. And I like to ask them, hey, I'm going to send two free samples. What kind of colors would you love to play with? Okay, and so then I choose accordingly. I also like to offer programs that are good for customer loyalty. So like a rewards program, a gift with purchase, okay, discounts. Um, and so those are things that I do to, um, to honor them and to thank them for, for choosing to purchase from me. They can go anywhere, but they're choosing to do business with me. I also honor the 100% satisfaction guarantee. I taught about that last night, about how to return, how to do a product uh, replacement through Mary Kay. Uh, and I like to take care of it right away on the front end. Sometimes the product replacement can take a couple of weeks for it to come. So let's just say that you're going to do an exchange. I go ahead and exchange it from my inventory first, and then I'm the person waiting for Mary Kay to ship me the new stuff. So I don't make the customer wait. I'd rather wait than have my customer wait. That's my recommendation. I also honor our try before you buy. And so that is why I believe in stocking um, inventory and samples. And for me, I find that it benefits me more to spend more on my wholesale because I get gifts and prizes and star prizes than on buying a whole bunch of samplers. I do offer a section two items for my gift with purchase or the small ones. If it's a really great customer and I really want her to try the, the mascara or something, I'll throw that in there. But otherwise, as far as them trying before they buy, I usually open up full size product to demo. And so I want to show you guys, so one of my favorites right now is the new fragrance. It's called uh, Forever Diamonds. And so I was wearing this last night. And so I just put a little, a little uh, sticky on my full size product and it says demo. And then I have on my wall in my office over here, up hanging up, is a clipboard. And I always take note of when I take things off my shelf, full size product, and I, I use it, I'm using it for demonstration items because that's a tax write off. That's a business expense. And so this sampler will will last me a very long time. Obviously, you can see that it's just to, to here, and I've been using it to um, 
for people to sample. Okay, I just had someone come in over the weekend and come into my office and I just pulled out some um, new fragrances that she hadn't tried yet and she ended up buying the other one, the Cityscape one, which I also really like, but this is another one that I've been sampling. So I wanted to share with you how I do that. Okay, so I like to honor the try before you buy because it increases your professionalism and it is something that sets us apart from others. I honestly can say um, I, this is funny because I'm super loyal. If you know me, I'm like, loyalty is like my top, one of my top strengths, okay? So when I, I'm the kind of person like, um, I didn't use a lot of makeup or skincare when I started my Mary Kay business, but I did um, use some stuff like, you know, I just buy I did buy, um, what was that, uh, oil of Olay. So I used oil of Olay um, facial cream, like a, a facial cream. And I used, honestly, the cleanser, if I, if I washed my face, it would just be random things. I would just pick up whatever, um, apricot scrub or whatever. And so I sometimes, I, I wasn't very loyal to that, but I just, I was really loyal to the oil of Olay. And then the only makeup that I knew about and that I would buy was um, I used to use the compact, the Studio Fix from MAC. <clears throat> and then I really didn't wear eyeshadow because I, I didn't know how to put it on and I always looked like a raccoon. Um, and then I really didn't wear anything on my brows. I really didn't wear foundation, but if I did, I would just buy like, um, you know, just random stuff at the, at the drugstore. And so when I started my Mary Kay business, this is a true story. My friend, um, my one of my, my best friends, had just given me a really good deal on um, the studio fix that Mac Compact because one of her cousins worked there and she was able to get it at a discount or whatever. And so I had like stocked up. So I had gotten like three of those compacts. And so I was using one and I had two more. And then I had just started my Mary Kay business. And guess what? I had just ordered my inventory. I got rid of all of my stuff, you guys. That's just who I am. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't wear anything else. Um, I didn't feel comfortable because I knew that people were going to ask me, well, do you use it? Are you wearing it? Um, how does it, and I didn't want to be like, well, actually I'm wearing Mac right now, but you should buy this Mary Kay. I just couldn't get myself to do that. <laughs> And I really, I really think um, that's how I got to know the product faster. And that's how um, I, I really could share like from my true experience of what it's like to wear and use the product because I, I did. I started using it all. Um, I threw out all of my stuff and I didn't use it. Um, the stuff, if I didn't throw it out, I just put it aside and I was like, okay, who can I give this to? Um, and so I either got rid of it or gave it away, but I just stopped using it altogether. And so I think that's super important because it, for me, it was just a level of professionalism. Like if I'm not willing um, to be loyal to my own business, like how can I expect other people uh, to be loyal to me? And so in sales, we have to remember it's all about the long term, the long term gain. And so be willing to let go of the idea of the instant gratification to build that long term success for yourself, the residual income. Because in what we do in sales, in, in our business, word of mouth and referrals and all that is huge. And it is four times harder to make a new customer than it is to keep one happy. Because this one really, really happy person would, might tell one or two of her friends or family all about you. But if you if somebody doesn't like you or you do something ooh, that was not professional or not good, this person's going to tell like blast it everywhere. OK, they're more likely to talk about something that went wrong. Um, so if they do love you, chances are they'll tell one or two people about you. But if you if they do not like you, they do not respect you or you break their trust, they're likely to tell, I mean, five to ten people about that experience. And so we have to really, really think, how can I make sure that I'm professional, that I'm honoring, um, that I'm honest, that I have integrity, that I'm doing everything that I can to really keep this customer happy, to gain her trust. Um, OK, and so. And so we think about skills and our skills in selling, you know, because selling is not a fly by the seat of your pants. It's a special person who gets really good at sales. And I say that because it is a skill and it's not always easy. Um, and so if it were easy, 
everyone would be great at it. But anybody can be great at it if they choose to learn the skill. Okay. And so with that said, um, I'm going to also um, become, I wanted to share these tips about becoming a master salesperson. Okay. So any ideas that we already have about sales, they're going to work for us or against us. And so I want you to consider what positive thoughts do you have about sales? What are you bringing with you into your Mary Kay business? On the other hand, what are some negative connotations or negative ideas that you have about sales and how are you bringing that into your business? And so obviously we know that um, negative ideas aren't going to take us to where we want to go. And so we have to make a decision to change our thoughts about sales because selling is an opportunity to help people. Just like how I said before, that showing another person love by enthusiastically selling them something that's great and that they really want. Okay, and so how do we become a master at a salesperson? How do we become a master salesperson? Um, customization, so I've learned that customization is the key. She wants to feel like you really are taking the time to think what would be best for her. Okay, so customizing is a great idea. So if she has some acne but really does want some anti-aging, how can you get her on the miracle set and incorporate the blemish control toner or the acne treatment gel? And so how can you get some acne medication in with her anti-aging and you let her know, okay, look, this is my best thoughts I studied and this is what I think would be best for you. So she knows you're taking the time to really be an expert on this, okay? And so customization is the key. You also want to do the research on your products and know what it is that the product benefits are. So you're not just going to, you know, say, oh, yeah, this eye cream is awesome. It's going to take your dark circles away when that's not in the product's claim. Like that eye cream is not for dark circles. Um, the repair is. or So you have to learn and do, be willing to do the research on our product so you know what the claim and benefits are um, so that you're not just claiming things that are not even um, scientifically backed by the research. Okay, and so you want to take personal responsibility for teaching people how to use it. And so if you don't know how to use it, how are you going to teach others to use it? And so that's just common sense, but I want to just point out that in the beginning, I mean, it is a lot of steps for us, like if you're not used to using a regimen. And so for me, I really had to learn this order, you know, the order of the application. And so a great tool is on Product Central on InTouch, and it tells you the order of application for every product that we have. And so it tells you whether you use it twice a day, morning and night, or just once a day, or just a couple times a week. It also tells you in which order you should place the products. And so if a customer is buying the queen of everything, you know, it's to her advantage to know how to use it. And so, and it's to your advantage too, because if she knows how to use it, she will. Um, and so then um, you want to give her that printout, that sheet, the printout, so she can take it with her. And then, of course, you want to follow up with her and make sure she's using it. Because I can't tell you the saddest thing that, that I've run into is people who tell me, um, oh, gosh, I bought the whole queen of everything. I spent $400, and it's still under my sink. Like, I never touched it because they didn't know how to use it. And so um, they didn't even know what they spent. They just got so excited and bought it and, um, and then just didn't use it. So make sure that you're teaching them how to use it. And then also... Um, you, how much can you really, our ideas of how much can we really sell making, you know, uh, how much can we really make, earn in, in terms of income in selling the product? Um, and so this is where uh, tracking and being a business person comes in. So you have to put the effort in, you have to put the product on at least 30 faces. And this is why we always say start with 30 faces because you want to start to learn your own averages. You want to get really um, just business savvy about looking at the numbers. Don't ignore the numbers. Don't pretend that the numbers are, um, you know, you don't want to look at them. Maybe you're embarrassed or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is at the end of the 30 faces, you want to know what is your average sale per face. 
So like I, I can remember in the beginning, I started tracking this and my average sale per face. So if I saw 15 faces or 30 faces and I broke down my total sales for the whole month and what, and I divided that by the 30 faces, what was my average? My average sales per face in the beginning was $30 a face. Then pretty quickly, my average sale went up. And I remember I was really excited because I was tracking that. And so pretty soon it was at $60 a face. Yay. And so it stayed, it stayed pretty steady there for $60 a face and then $90 a face. And so then I started to feel really confident. Like if I could get in front of people, um, the reason why this is important is because let's say you have an earnings goal. So pretty quickly by my second month, I had seen the potential and I, my mind started going, oh, okay, I get it. It all happened because I did my power start. I want to point that out. I did 30 faces in the first 30 days and I did that again my next month. And so I could see the income potential because I was selling a ton of product. And so from that point, um, I was able to plan. And so the way, the way that you do this is you say, okay, so if I sell an average of $30 a face, how many faces would I have to see to meet my goal? So let's just say in the beginning, for example, my goal was to earn at least a thousand dollars extra. I uh, earn a thousand dollars. I wanted to prove to my husband and to myself that I can at least make a thousand dollars a month selling the product. And so you can calculate that when you know what your average sale is. You can't really, you're just shooting blanks, you know, if you don't really know, like, how much do you sell? And so that will give you a realistic um, plan for yourself so that you say, okay, so if I wanted to make $500 and my average sale is X amount, times that by that, and that will give you the number of faces that you would need to see in the month okay, to hit that goal. So then you can start planning realistically for yourself and your family, okay? And so you want to get good at tracking that. The other thing that I will tell you is um, in the skill of, of selling, we said already, it's all about focusing on others. And then there is specific things you can do to increase your sales. So I'm going to tell you right now, you want to focus on sets. At your appointments, you're going to focus on sets. So you're going to use the word sets. So get used to saying sets. Okay. I'm going to go over the sets. I'm going to summarize the, the, you know, the common sets. Which set excites you the most? Which set could you envision yourself using? So you're asking those questions and you're using the word sets. Not what products did you like? Um, what products could you get excited about? because they're going to throw in a random array of products. You're going to focus on selling skincare sets. And you know, Mary Kay launched the 21 day challenge. So that there, there's this huge emphasis um, nationwide on the 21 day skincare challenge. Why? Because we had um, a lot of beauty consultants were getting away from the basics of selling the basic sets, this, the miracle set, the basic set. So we were selling a lot of cleansers by themselves or this by itself. And that doesn't help them. That doesn't really help your customer because they're not going to get that excited when their face doesn't do a whole lot of different things <laughs> just using one of the products. When they use at least um, a skincare regimen together, that is when they're going to see the results in their skincare. And that is when they're going to get super excited and they're going to be loyal customers. And so it all goes back to the fundamentals of skincare. The research has shown that really um, to get the most benefit out of your skincare regimen, you really need to use a system together. Don't mix and match your products because they have not been scientifically tested, clinically tested together. So try a system. Try a system for three months and see how your skin responds, okay? To know whether you really love this product and it's doing everything that you would really love it to do. There's five basic things that you can do to take great care of your skin, and that's wash your face twice a day, okay, with the cleanser that's suitable for your skin type. Use an exfoliator, a mask, something to take the dead surface skin off. Protect your skin daily from the sun. Also, you want to moisturize daily, and you want to use a toner, a freshener. 
to normalize the pH levels in your skin and close the pore. And so what we're teaching them is how to use our skincare systems to meet these basic skincare needs. Okay, so it all starts with the set. And so really getting good at your table open and your table close and the individual consultation will be the key to maximizing your sales. Let me just say this too. Uh, when I was attending a, as a consultant Karen Gardner's unit, I was consistently the queen of sales and also in um, Cindy Koenig's unit out in San Diego. I was also, I was the rookie of the year uh, my first year and I was recognized um, in that unit because my sales were consistently high. Now, why um, I really felt uncomfortable um, doing the individual consultation, but I knew that it was important, um, and I knew that I wanted to get the people away from the table and then really offer that customized and that personal service, and it makes all the difference because at any party where I was feeling rushed or maybe there was too many people, so this is another key. You do not want your parties to have more than six people. It gets way too long and too crazy, and your sales really are lower than if you have four to six people sitting around the table. When you have four to six people sitting around the table, they get that individualized service with you. You get to sit with them at the end during the individual consultation, and your sales are much higher. And so you definitely want to plan for your individual consultation, and you want to plan at least, I set aside in my head, 30 minutes for that. So the shortest um, part of your skincare class is them actually putting the product on their face. And you can make it fast. You can make it fast by putting a timer on and just being like, okay, this is what you're using. This is how you're going to use it. On the count of three, I'm going to put the timer on. You get two minutes to do your skincare. Whoever wins gets this prize. And so that, that process is, is pretty fast of just putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, and then just putting on their moisturizers. Okay, so that part should be very fast. Um, and so the, the part that's going to take longer is the opening, the closing. So you're going to go over the sets. You're going to do individual consultations. And that part is the one that takes a little bit longer. But you need to do it. And so... Um, doing the individual consultation is a big, big tip. And so I basically know it, how you're also um, closing the sales. If on your wish list, this is a good hint, on their wish list, when you say, okay, turn over your profile cards, and then you have them write their wish list at the end of the class. If you're sitting with them during the individual and you're going over their profile cards and it says things like the, the lip gloss or the mascara, the foundation, if that's what's on their wish list, then this is, an, uh, uh, this is a training issue. It's that at the table close, you aren't coaching them enough. So we coach them by closing it, presenting the sets, and then saying, if money was no object, which set would you be most excited to take home with you today? Which set? And so they're going to put the flawless finish set. And you're going to coach them because you're going to go, would it be the basic set? Would it be the satin set? Would it be the princess set? Would it be the, okay, so you're saying the sets again. So you're coaching them. Which set? So they're going to write a set down, okay, on their profile card because you're coaching them. You're telling them what you're looking for. Okay, and so the really uh, amazing truth about uh, sales is that you know um, only in sales are you able to really really have an unlimited earning potential and um, because the moment that I realized that like wow if I'm willing to get out there and hold parties or get out there and um, just maximize this skill of selling wow there is just, it's open-ended, right? It's open-ended. Um, there is no cap. Mary Kay doesn't say you cannot sell more than $10,000 this month. And so we have to grow our belief. And I still remember getting on a, a teleconference, a special conference call. Um, and so I was privileged to be invited to listen in on this call. And it was the queen. It was that year's queen of sales. It was a consultant who had sold and who was the queen of sales of all Mary Kay and she was on a conference call and I was just amazed that she was able to make over a thousand 
$50,000 a year just on her sales. She did not have a team. And I just thought, well, a couple of things I thought. Um, one was I thought, oh my gosh, I've been thinking so small. My mind was so tiny. I thought, oh gosh, I didn't know. And so she really maximized the holiday selling season. She learned how to mass produce like gift sets. And so she actually worked with uh, an outside like company that produced the boxes, like the size of things that she wanted and how to package them because she um, really emphasizes and at all of her skincare classes and all of her appointments, she just prepared for wish list and gift giving. Like that was her specialization wish lists and gift giving and she gave specific um trainings on how she did that and so but 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 i had two thoughts about that one was oh wow like she's been able to build a successful at-home business simply selling the product however i thought but you know what um personally i think wow if she was able to do that like i feel like wow who else would really benefit from doing this? Like if you could learn to do this and you could teach other people to do this, you know, and that's the heart of when we think about leadership in Mary Kay, it's all about, you know, if you, if you know how to do something and now you're able to teach someone else to make a change in her life that could benefit her. Wow. Like what a privilege, what a blessing that we're able to pass it on. And that is the heart of Mary Kay. And she always believed that we should pass it on. And so, um, so I had mixed feelings about that just because I, I do believe in team building. I do believe in sharing the business opportunity. And so, um, I do believe you can make a mortgage payment selling the product, but I do believe in also sharing the business opportunity. Okay. And so if you really wrap your mind around the amazing opportunity that you have, if you can just grasp, you know, you just attached yourself to a top global beauty brand, uh, a consumable product, so people run out of it and they will be repurchasing their makeup and their skincare. And why not purchase it from you? Because you provide the best customer service you make them feel special and you are just um you're just an amazing woman and so they want to support you so if you could explain and show and demonstrate and be an expert in the mary Kay products you really can learn to be a great salesperson so the catch is all in our attitude and in the belief that we can learn and we can master this art of selling okay and so I'm going to end with this and um, and the homework. And so um, I want to just end with this thought. What we focus on, what we um, intentionally think upon, that's what we bring about. So what we think about, we bring about. We say that a lot, but it's really, really true. So what are we looking for? Um, what are we looking for? Because we're going to find what we're looking for. And so um, what are we focused on? I'm focused on finding women who are interested in taking great care of themselves. Um, and they're really interested in wonderful skincare and awesome um, customer service. And so that's who I'm finding. Homework. So here is the homework assignment for today. Um, answer these questions. I'll post them on Boxer, but answer these questions and private message them to me. Number one, what's the one most important thing that you learned from today's pace setter session? Number two, what positive ideas do you have about sales and how is that going to help you or how is that already helping you? On the flip side, what are some negative ideas about sales that you have and how might that be hurting you right now? And then number three, what will you do this week to sharpen your selling skills? What will you do? What action step will you take this week to sharpen your selling skills? And so God bless you all. Make it a wonderful week.